that a lot of men are having in their blood work mid-normal total testosterone levels, but with a high uh, SHBG. And as a result, of course, they have a low free testosterone. Uh, if they are suffering from the typical OT symptoms with this common blood work results, uh, how do you go about trying to solve that puzzle? Do you use uh, boron? If so, uh, does it really work enough to lower the SHBG? Or do you start them on TRT directly? So what's your advice there? Um, sometimes uh, the, that, that is a good case for an individualized regimen. So all the above would be the answer in that case. And identifying the root cause is the important thing. So if you have a higher SHBG, then it is very likely that you metabolize your androgens more slowly. So it's kind of a blessing and a curse. So the question would be, how fast are you, are you metabolizing? How fast are you synthesizing? So how much synthesis is happening? Because some individuals with a very high SHBG also have very high total testosterones. So in um, a case where there's say three individuals in that exact same scenario, perhaps one of them is boron deficient or boron insufficient. Um, in some areas, boron in the soil is more depleted. Some people will check the boron in the soil, which I think that's wonderful. I'm, I'm in the camp that you just uh, try boron in most of those individuals. It usually wears off after a couple of weeks. I don't think that like two weeks on, two weeks off, two weeks on, two weeks off is necessarily like a, a magical regimen of boron. I think that um, it just takes a while for the uh, feedback mechanisms to kind of readjust SHBG after starting boron, but it's certainly not going to hurt. Um, Boron is also a very weak anti-estrogen and technically a goitrogen as well. So it does have other functions within the body other than just modulating SHBG. It's important to look at insulin signaling. For example, if someone's on a very low carb diet, insulin binding the insulin receptor in the liver itself directly downregulates gene transcription of SHBG. So having a slightly higher fasting insulin from, or for example, incorporating healthy carbs in the diet can help control SHBG. And then in addition to that, you want to make sure that the signaling of things like IGF-1 and estrogen is not in excess. So if you have a lot of estrogen, estrogen binding the estradiol alpha receptor in the liver is going to induce more gene transcription of SHBG. So just kind of getting a, a good look at the whole picture and determining what camp someone in, is in, um, we'll find if we're able to optimize that free testosterone. After the free testosterone is optimized, it's also important to correlate that with symptoms. So again, this just kind of goes back to the importance of incorporating objective data in medicine with subjective data. So I've also seen cases where an uh, individual with a total testosterone of 650 and a free testosterone of 6, they uh, optimize their free testosterone naturally to 25 and still feel the same. So in cases like that, it's probably dopaminergic activity. That's the root cause rather than the uh, androgenic activity. Last thing on this is free testosterones are often inaccurate depending on the assay. So calculating one based on a total T and a SHBG to kind of check your work is also important.